Lord, your call, I had to suspend that. Thank you so much, sir. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify your name. We worship you and exalt you for your love and care. Thank you because of whom you are. Thank you because of your loving kindness and tender mercy. Lord Jesus, we are grateful for the testimony we had from your servant yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you because of what we will see here more. Thank you for giving me. Thank you, Lord, for Angel. Thank you for everyone in the family. Thank you for all our pastors, Lord, who have been praying tirelessly, waiting on you, and to see the intervention that will take place about this situation. And thank you for the testimony that we ourselves are receiving. Thank you, Lord, because you had not abandoned us. Thank you so much, Lord, that whenever we call upon your name, you hear. We pray, oh Lord, that this morning, as we see your face as husband and wife, glorify yourself in our midst. Glorify yourself in our lives. Glorify yourself in our situation. Glorify yourself in our family. Glorify yourself in our children. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, this morning, we want to begin to give thanks to God. Let's give thanks to God and worship His holy name. Let's adore Him. And... We thank you for having serious black people, Lord. Among the gods that we have to be, we are calling us happy. We want us to worship you. Father, now we bless you. We will bless you. Be for the day that my to be I am waiting for let me check the six in verse 13. Can you hear me? Hello, please. Can you people hear me? Yes. No, can I hear you? Okay, sir. In Leviticus chapter 6, in verse 13, the Bible says that the fire, the fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually. It shall not be extinguished. That's a uh, the scripture in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. And uh, in Amplified Bible, it says, The fire shall be burning continually on the altar. It shall not be allowed to go out. There are many things that make fire to go out in the family. And uh, we will be attacking some of the things this morning. The King James Version will say that the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. May the fire of the Lord upon the altar of our family never go out in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whenever there's misunderstanding between husband and wife, have you ever realized that they don't pray again together? Have you realized that's exactly what the devil does? Sometimes, some of the accusation of the man against the wife 
may not be ordinary. Sometimes some of the accusation of the wife against the husband may not be ordinary. The goal of Satan is just to make sure that they no longer pray together anymore. They no longer call upon God because the truth is that if husband and wife can just agree together, oh, and they pray and they are uni united in prayer, they are united in purpose, they are united in life. Oh, it's a mighty and powerful force. And the devil does not like such a thing. So he will do everything to disconnect them. Either he will make sure. Sometimes you just hear some accusation and some things that are said against spouses. And then you wonder, uh, uh, but it's a minor thing. What exactly happened? Jesus said, an enemy has done this. And what is the purpose? To quench, to kill the fire. And we are told here, the fire shall mm. never go out. It shall ever be burning. The fire. <laughs> What's the fire here? Oh, and the altar here yeah. refer to the altar of prayer. It says yeah. the altar will not be quenched. We want to go before God now. In the name of Jesus, our family altar will not be quenched. Amen. Our family prayer will not be Amen. quenched. Couples prayer will not be quenched. I hope you know that even this Monday prayer, the devil is not happy. All this prayer we pray weekly. I hope you know the devil is not, devil does not like prayer, especially, please, let's listen to me very well. The devil does not like prayer. Well, if someone is praying in transgression, that may not, he may not bother himself because he knows that that person is still his property. If someone is praying in sin and unrighteousness and is not ready to repent, the devils do not care much about that. But when you see a godly man pray, godliness and righteousness gives boldness in the place of prayer. When you find a man who is righteous by the grace of God, godly by the help of the Holy Ghost, and then sanctified and holy totally. And that man prays. And that man calls upon God. And the man is united with his wife. And the wife is righteous through, through the earth and through the redemption in Christ. I tell you, they become a mighty and powerful force. And when you find a group of people like we are, by the grace of God, living righteously, and we come together to pray, do you think the devil will ever be happy? Never. That's why this morning we want to go before God, and I hope you know that we are like family. I hope you know that. I hope you know we are like family. That's why when something happens to any of us, we are concerned. That's a family right there. We are not just a platform. We are not just uh, people who mm -hmm. just come together way we are actually a family that's why it is easy for me when i was to leave for lagos last um recently i had to put call a call and then since i knew at my land in Ikorodo, i called pastor my uh, peter okay eventually even though i did not get there i did not come to Ikorodo eventually but i had to call that's like a family and I had to show the direction I was coming to. That's like a family. Sometimes when he's coming to worry here, he will put call a call for Pastor Yomi, or I'll be coming to Delta State. That's a family. And then we call Pastor Matthew, and we check on him. Oh, are you doing, Pastor? I hope you are fine. You are faring well. That's a family. And then we are checking on one another. Actually, that's a family. And the devil will want this prayer altar to be quenched. It will want the altar to be put out. It will want the altar. It will do everything to make sure the fire upon the altar is quenched. Either by bringing accusation, misunderstanding among the pastors, among the leaders. And make sure he uses this one, that one, that one. And then before you know it, there's animosity, there's anger, there's misrepresentation. And then before you know it, this one. Way that one goes this way. We want to pray in the name of Jesus. The fire shall not go out of the altar. In the name, I am angry with the devil. This morning. I am 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to pray this morning. Sometimes the reason why the fire in the family is being quenched, uh, sometimes is because of lack of sensitivity on the part of the man or the part of the woman. For example, you find the woman, you know, just busy in the house. Hello? Uh, go ahead, sir. And then you find the woman does everything, and then she will still go to work and all that. And she's fatigued, she's tired. And then sometimes you find a situation where the man is just uh, is just inconsiderate. And then at the end of the day, they can't call each other for prayer, or is either the man that is just fatigued, does everything, and the woman will just cause her leg in the house, nothing is being done by her, and she's in inconsiderate, and yet she's not going anywhere, and she's not doing anything, and the man is overwhelmed with everything in the house. And then before you know it, because of lack of insensitivity and love being considered, and then you find the prayer altar of the woman going down, the prayer altar of the man going down. And then before you know it, they can go on like that, no prayer. They can go on like that, nothing whatsoever. And Jesus said, an enemy has done this. There are strength things coming into the home and coming into the many families today. They are wondering, how did this one get into our children? How did we come here? How did we end up here? One of the things to show, one of the things that show that uh, something is happening to that spiritual life little by little is that you now discover why he gets angry easily as a husband or the wife or the husband gets angry. You know, I'm taking that girl. You're not taking that any little thing she flex up, any little thing it flex up, any little thing it misinterpret, any little thing she misinterpret, and then before you know it, accusation comes in. Some of these things are not ordinary. I want to pray right now. Every seed of this call the devil wants to sow, or the devil has sown already in our family or on this platform. Today, Jesus said. Anything my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. Are there seeds that have been sown by the devil in our family? This morning we unite together and we agree together. <laughs> we are in that name of the Lord. Let us be the of this court. Every one of the devil, the enemy has planted. 
Some people don't share certain testimony in the church that and then you wonder if they see you and your family your wife you are doing well you smile you come to church you are doing okay or you visit family or you move around and they see two of you always smiling not quarreling at any time and they are wondering uh, you know i hope you know there are people who are not happy and they are always angry and envious and jealous even when they see that your family is highly united and you are together and you are living peacefully. I hope you know there are powers like that. There are neighbors like that. There are people, human beings. And then you wonder, are they witches and wizards? Are they demonic evil people? There are people in the church and there are human beings because they, they just feel that you should have problems. They just feel that your, your should not be better. Your should not be good and all of that. And things like that, you know, I saw a movie, and in that movie, this lady, she, they married as a Christian, quite all right. And then before they knew it, the lady began to share testimony with her friend. Her friend, I didn't see her husband in that movie. I didn't see her husband. Maybe she was not married. I guess she was not married. And she'll be sharing testimony, not knowing that the other lady that, no, uh, that, uh, that is not married, she was not. Uh, she was just being jealous, and this one was. We just be laughing and opening her mouth and be sharing testimony, and then she did not know that she was sharing testimony with the wrong audience. You know, there are people they don't they don't know. There's what we call wrong audience, and then she was sharing the testimony, and then before we knew it, that one found a way to scatter that family so that they would not be happy, and she succeeded until God intervened, until God intervened. She scattered, it was terrible. It was something else. She poisoned the mind of the lady against her husband. And that's exactly what is happening today. And then you go to the social media, you find all these licentious, promiscuous, and reckless, faceless mm. ladies, faceless, they don't know God, they don't know the Bible. They said they are relationship experts. They said they are mm. marriage experts. And then they begin to release poison, poison to single mm. lady. And they begin to and they begin to teach them what they call feminism. And then and then you find some of those ladies. Some of them are even married. And then they come to the family and then no submission anymore to the husband. And then because of what they are afraid, they poison their swallow. And they begin to carry the same thing. And you find some of our people so called deeper life and all that. A lot is happening. We want to pray in the name of Jesus. Every intruder into our family shall be exposed by fire. Every intruder. God has not planted the enemy has planted in our family. But then ever we pray, O oh Lord, that you will burn them all by fire, expose them by fire, or cut them over and cut them to in the name of Jesus. I put it at the same time. 
Some of our brethren, or maybe our leaders, are not getting me. Uh, let me throw more light again. Remember a case of uh, Eve. Uh, Satan was an intruder. I hope you know that Eve and Adam was living peacefully before the serpent came. Am I correct? They were living peacefully. Yeah, yeah. And they yes. were enjoying the peace of God. They were enjoying the fellowship of God. They were enjoying that garden of Eden. They were enjoying everything. Satan wasn't happy. The serpent wasn't happy. I hope you know Satan has not changed. It's still like that. It still remains like that. It will continue to be like that until the end of time. That's why we tell people to pray. Sometimes, even when things are going well with you, in fact, that's when you need prayer the more, the most. Now, even when things, you get job, pray. And then you have children, you have good marriage, still pray. Don't think it's until there is problem before you pray. You have to be on the defensive side, on the offensive side, rather, and not on the defensive side. You don't wait until you are in battle before you engage the powers of darkness. You don't wait. You don't wait. You stop them before they stop you. You wound them before you are wounded. You get them totally obliterated before you are obliterated. The devil will not obliterate us. We will obliterate the powers of darkness against our marriage, against our home, and against our children. Look at what the devil did. He came to Eve, and Eve was deceived. My wife will not be deceived. Wait for your spouse now. My wife will not be deceived. 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 I read to us in that Levitical chapter six, verse thirteen that the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. I trust God that the fire, the family altar, the family prayer, the couple's prayer, there will be fire in it. One of the things that quench that altar, one of the things, let me say it quickly now, one of the things that tend to quench the family altar or that tend to quench the, the what do you call it now, the couple's prayer, and then, and then it is something that is not done again in many homes, is because when some people come for family altar or couples prayer and they want to read scripture, they begin to use scripture to attack one another. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't bring a problem to the family altar. And uh, you know, there's something I have learned myself. I, you realize that if you are correcting your wife and you are not correcting her in a loving way, you will discover that it might be difficult to even accept. I'm telling you the truth. Because the truth is that you don't correct incorrigibility 
by being incorrigible yourself. In other words, you want to correct sin. You want to correct sin. And you are committing sin by correcting sin. Let me explain what I mean. You find some pastors, they want to discipline someone in the church who has committed sin, either fornication or whatsoever, or adultery. And then they come to the altar, and they are getting angry. They call it only anger. It's not any only anger. That man is battling with anger himself. And he unleashed the anger from the altar against the man and against the woman. And then you are wondering, uh -uh, you correct this person. And then so that this person does not go out and then, and is handed over to Satan and Satan destroy him. You correct him in a loving manner and then seek for his restoration. No, you will not find some pastor like that. It's like they enjoy that discipline. It's like they delight in it. And then out of that, only, uh, what they call holy anger, which is not only holy anger, and then they start committing sin themselves. And that's why we want to make sure that we really have this real experience and virtue within. Many of the things that make the wife not to be interested in the prayer is that maybe the husband will come to the, to the, to the family devotion. And the only scripture you will be reading is that, wife, submit. You must submit. You must submit. And it, the way it's even saying it, it's like attacking the wife. Or it could be the wife that wants to handle scripture that day. And then he goes to that part where they say, uh, if the man is not able to provide for his family, he's an infidel. And it's not that that's the that scripture for that day. It's just to attack the husband and to make sure the husband feels less than a man. And all that, and when all those things happen, the family altar will be quenched. The family, let's understand the tactics of the devil. Let's understand all these secrets that the devil uses to destroy many homes and destroy many families. We don't attack each other like that. We want to cry to God. Whatever had affected all as couple, whatever had affected our relationship as couple, whatever had affected our communication in the family, let the Lord expunge now. Let the Lord take away now. Let the Lord remove completely now. Please, I'm praying. We are talking to God I in in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lastly, lastly, as I told Pastor Peter, lastly, we want to pray and tell the Lord quickly and say, Father, whatever it is, you know, another issue that quenches the fire is the responsibility at home. Can you imagine? Nothing at home, no food, no money, nothing, no assets, and the woman is fed up. She's tired. Even though she's a righteous woman, but she's tired. At least she will not be eating righteousness now. She will not be eating righteousness. She needs food. The children need food. And they will not be eating for God so love the world. They need money and all that. And because they need money, sometimes the men are frustrated. And it is not that this man is lazy. No, things are not just working the way they should. And everywhere it just tied. And everywhere it just sealed up like the heaven being closed. And everywhere, and you are, the take home cannot even take care of their family. And everywhere it just tied. And that is affecting the family. That is affecting the prayer of the man and the prayer of the family entirely. And the children are wondering, does God still answer prayer? Does God still care for this family? Is there God in heaven that cares? I want to pray that God will take care of all our pastors and their family. God will take care of all our members on this platform. God will take care of our home. We will not be lagging behind. God will supply all our needs. Things are so expensive in the market today. Things are highly expensive, but God will take care of all. God will take care of all. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. That I day. We pray, O oh Lord, that you visit us. I pray, O oh Lord, to come in all our leaders in platform number three. We pray that you do great and mighty things in our lives, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus.
Lord, we do want that in our lives, O Lord. Father, do want us in our lives, O Lord. And let your name and your name and your name be exalted. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we worship and bless your name. For yet another wonderful day. Thank we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the ability to wake up and be able to stand from the bed. Well, thank you for our legs that are moving. Thank you for our eyes that, that are seeing. We thank you for our voice that is speaking. We say glory, honor, and worship. Thanks give be unto your name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for our beloved pastor that you have used this morning again. We exalt your name for how you always use him to bless our families. We thank you for this morning talking about the family altar, not to be the fire not to be quenched. Father, we pray that we keep our fire burning, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, they have shown us things that could lead to this. O oh Lord God in heaven, we know the days we are living uh Almost the perilous days. Things are difficult. Things are hard. Father, we pray that the environment, things happening around us, Father, we pray the great that you, you know affect us. Grant unto us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, at this time, O Lord, we bring our families before you. This at the time where we really need you, O Lord. Father, come and fill the gap for us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh Lord, connect us to the heavenly um, resources so that the resources of our nation will not be what we depend on alone. Father, put us in your in, in your plan and provide for because you said in your word, you will feed us, you will take care of us. The best of the earth, the animals, they do not work, but they do not starve. Oh Lord, go and you are able to provide for these animals. How much more we that are created in your image. Oh Lord, we pray that you meet everyone of us at the point of our needs, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We use this uh, time also to pray for our beloved Pastor Asian. We pray, oh Lord, that whatsoever the issue is, Pastor Ali was talking about him yesterday, we should check on him. Thank God is with all this morning. We pray that your eye will touch him. You will Amen. heal his body. You will Amen. heal him from the, the crown of his head to the toe of his feet. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we commit Pastor Matthew, Lord, to your hands once again. We thank you for the testimonies we are hearing. We thank you for the great things you are doing already in his life. We pray that God that has started this whole thing, Father, we accomplish it. And the testimony will be complete, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Commit every one of us, O Lord, to your hand. Meet us at the point of our needs. Amen. Open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us that there will be no room enough to contain, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Commit this week, O oh Lord, to your hand. We pray our presence will lead and guide us. At the retreat start this week, O oh Lord, Father, we pray that great and mighty things you do amongst your people and your church, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayers, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's call Amen. upon the name of the Lord, that Almighty Father, a new thing you will do in my life. Let's call upon the Lord. Father, we pray, oh, Lord, that you do a new thing in our life today, the oh, Lord. Of last year, one year before the last, Father, do a new thing in our life. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, do a new thing in our life. Oh, my dear Father, do a new thing in our life. My Lord, 
Clean will all do a new thing in our lives to hold on. In the name of Jesus. Pray for us. Pray for us. We don't let you understand it. I was listening to the one of the artists in the interview. And he was complaining about those who are following him that they were complaining. He narrated, you will see that they even have more money than him. They said that he was able to do to to invest. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, my Father, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, I mean, make the money you are giving to me. One of one dollar of it, one Ghana money of it, one Nigeria money of it, one Spain money of it, one the one uh, uh, Republic Arabic of it. That the way, Almighty Father, that that one million, that one naira, we be transformed and we become ten million dollar. Father, let me go. All of the name of the Lord, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not be at the center of poverty. I will not be at the center of poverty. Poverty. You will not be at the beginning of poverty. I will not be at the beginning of poverty. You will not end. You will not end. As somebody that experiences poverty, I will not end. As somebody that experiences poverty, in the name of Jesus Christ. All of the name of the Lord, a new garment, Almighty Father. So I give to be in the name of. Jesus Christ. A new garment, a new gown. A new garment, a new gown. That belong to us, to you. You want to be, you want that belong to woman being. That belong to us, to you. Come upon the name of the Lord. Father. So what uh, that, so, uh, that garment upon me? So why that grace upon me? Then, Almighty oh, Father, let me love, O oh Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, a new garment God is going to give to you. This morning, a new, a new Thing God is going to do in your life. A new name God is going to give to you. A new name God is going to give to you. Give to me in the night. Call upon the name of the Lord by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. As you are going to be going out, as I am going to be going out now. This morning we will, we will, we will come across for to in the name of Jesus Christ. For to be our our principal in the name of Jesus Christ. For to for to shall be greater than anything of this earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord for the grace of the Lord upon you. For the grace of the Lord upon our prayer online. For what we are doing, we have been sharing testimony. We have been sharing testimony. Call upon the name of the Lord by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. This time around, you are ready. You are ready for the glory of the Lord. I'm ready for the glory of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord by the power and the blood of Jesus. Wherever you are. The glory of the Lord will shine upon you. The glory of the Lord will shine upon me. Call upon the name of the Lord. 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 There's nothing you cannot do. They call upon the name of the Lord. They are part of all what God has been doing. But they will be that God has God has come up to you. Yes, you are able and in the front that is not only able. Call upon the name of the Lord about the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord will reign your will reign your breath in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon Let's call upon me. Let's call upon him. No, no going back. 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 Call upon the name of the Lord, the Almighty Father, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. God will be upon you. God will be with your family. God will be with your children. God will be with your grandchildren. The grace of the Lord shall be upon you. The mercy of the Lord will be upon you. By the time you shall come back in the evening, it's like we should have this morning prayer that we should ask him. For how long? Call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, the grace of the Lord will be upon you. The mercy of the Lord will see you through. Pray for your children, your children. Pray for your children. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, and nothing God will do in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Among those your children will receive doctor. Among those your children will receive medical doctor. Among those your children will receive academic doctor. Among those your children will receive lawyer. Among those your children will receive pastors. Among those your we will see architect among those of your children. We will see contractor that will be the person call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood, as you are fashioning this prayer today, God is fashioning with my family. God is fashioning God is, God is, God is you with your family. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you, you shall read. You, you shall be great. I shall be great in the name of Jesus Christ. I shall be great. Your, 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 your,
in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of the Lord, that all the interests of God, whatever it may be, other family causes, whatever it may be, other money or other money causes, whatever it may be, the interests that can continue to be hindered, that we be enough of your good to know, Almighty God should remove this money in the name of Jesus Christ. God should remove this. Money as a people of the world, they are, they are putting on Jesus. Go to you, we put on something that better you in the name of Jesus Christ. Call up the name of the Lord from this moment, from this hour. The Baba, the power in the blood of Jesus, draw shall open for you. Draw shall open for me. Draw shall open for you. Draw shall open for me. Draw shall open for me. Draw shall open for me. Call up the name of the Lord, the Lord, the power and the Lord, the Almighty God is going to help you. The Lord of the Lord will help you. Almighty God is going to help you. The Lord of the Lord will help you. God, I want, I want you to hear you pray for your children. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. Yeah, but oh, what you are saying now by the power and the blood, they have become a rest because of you. They shall perish. I perish. They are perishing. They are perishing. God upon the name of the Lord, the Almighty God is going to be with you. The Lord of the Lord will be your strength. God upon the name of the Lord, the Almighty Father will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Almighty Father is going to come to you in the name of Jesus. Let's call upon Him. 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 What is that thing? What is that thing? What is that thing that is weighing you down? My brother, that you cannot even pray. My sister, that you cannot even pray. You see this? You see this? Is is it that? Let you your open your mind that this, God, that this by the power and the blood of this way, I want to see this sign. The sign and the revelation from above. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, I want to see you. All upon the name of the Lord that God can do it. God that do your own with you, my own. God that do my own with you, your own. All upon the name of the Lord that Almighty Father will be with you. Almighty Father will be with you. Almighty will be with you. We will be with you. We will be with your family. Your family shall end up with that. My family shall exist. Your family shall exist. My family shall exist. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Almighty Father is going to take total control of everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for your children. I want you to. I want to see you pray for your children. Call upon the name of the Lord. That Almighty Father is my intervention. Is my invitation. Give to my children. In the name of Jesus Christ, give to my children in the name of Jesus Christ, give to my children in the name of Jesus Christ, and Almighty Father, I want you to take control. Almighty Father, I want you to take control. Almighty Father, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, be with my children in the name of Jesus Christ, be with my children in the name of Jesus Christ, let your name be glorified. 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 Let your so, Pastor Mare was still with you. Please conclude for us. If not, Pastor. Amen. 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 You never we are grateful. Thank Amen. you for the way that we've been led this morning. And thank you, Lord, for the servant that led us again to pray for our family, our children in particular. Lord Amen. Jesus, we ask that even as we have made the declaration this morning, Amen. we know that we are great. We Amen. know our children. Great. We Amen. know the future Amen. is bright, Amen. and we know the end is dark. Our children, we know the devil and like evil and the powers of darkness. We know hijack them. Amen. Amen. Everything we have told you in the place of prayer this morning, thou, O oh God, the monarch of Zion, respond from heaven and give us answer. Amen. This week, Amen. Treat this week. And we begin the GCK this week as we Amen. go into the proper. Holy Father, we shall see you. We Amen. shall see you. We shall Amen. see you. And Amen. we will 
platform with testimony, plenty of testimony. Amen. So shall be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Let's share Wait. with you. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning my God. God bless, God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Say, Pastor Peter, you quickly call me, Abby. Yes, sir. Okay. I must be. Yeah, I As you see, all righteous principles being overturned. You are at the top, 
don't calm down, don't backslide, don't look down, and don't look behind you. Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, and let him that is in the field not turn back again to take up his garment. It's saying to the people that will live at that time that if they hear that something has happened in the city, the abomination of desolation in Jerusalem and the Antichrist is occupying the siege where God ought to occupy and is blaspheming the name of God if they in the field. Let them not come back to the place where they were before because affliction was, will start in a devastating, destructive manner. What's that saying to you and to me? Well, the field of evangelism, well, the field of working for God, and we hear that this is happening, this is happening, that's not the time to come back and say, you know, nightclub and drinking and merriment and picnic, because now we know the time is near, and we're not going to allow anything to disengage us and to make us leave the work he has given us today. In verse 17, it says, in verse 17, but woe to them that are with charge and to them that give suck in those days. Why? Is it a crime to have a child, a crime to be pregnant? Not, not at all. He's talking about such a time when the Antichrist will uh, take over and then when food will be measured, when you will not be able to take this and buy this except to take the mark of the Antichrist. And even if you could endure hunger by yourself, if you could endure the Coming by yourself and you say, I will take my stand. What about the baby that is crying all the time? I need something to eat. And if that if that child is going to get what to eat, then you have to take the mark of the beast. And once you take that mark, it's all over. That means that the destruction will come. That's why it says, be ready now, so you will not be in the world at such a time. My brother, my sister, if there's anything that should occupy our attention, it is being ready at this time. It says in verse 18, in verse 18, it says, and pray that your flight be not in the winter. Your flight be not when it will be so very cold in the land of Israel, and something so cold like the winter, biting cold, that they will not be able to move out, they will not be able to run, even if there is devastation, abomination, even if there is uh, damnation going on, and they wanted to escape, they will not be able to escape, but well, I'm praying for you, you will not be here at such a time. You will be ready in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 42. Matthew Chapter 24, reading from verse 42. It says, Watch therefore, watch therefore, watch over your life, watch over the Christian experience you have, watch over the title, and watch over your ticket, and watch over your qualifications, spiritual qualification that will take you to heaven. Don't be so careless and throw it aside and be looking for other things. Watch it therefore. For ye know not what hour the Lord does come. In verse 44, in verse 44, it says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as she think not the Son of Man cometh. Be ye also ready. I pray you'll be ready in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two is the affliction beyond description during the great tribulation. Now, the church is gone. Now, the saints are raptured. Now, the believers have gone from here. And now, the great tribulation is going to happen. And you need to understand, number one, the prophecy of the great tribulation is prophetic. And it is there. And it is unchangeable, unalterable, the prophecy of the great tribulation. Number two is to see the peculiarity of the great tribulation. It will be a peculiar time, a serious time, a time that had never been, a kind of suffering that had never been, that will never be. It's the peculiarity of the great tribulation. Number three is the period. How long will it be? The peculiarity and the period 
of the great tribulation. Look at uh, Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 19. Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 19. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, neither shall be. You see what the Lord Jesus Christ himself said? He said, it will be a time of affliction. Those days, that period, that time will be the time of affliction. And then he qualifies it like this. It says, such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, and neither shall be. Actually, uh, that word, uh, tribulation, is uh, not just something that we uh, cut out. It's not just something that we say, okay, look at this. It will be tribulation. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And you will see what the Lord called it himself. Matthew chapter 24, and I'm reading from verse 21. In Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation. The language of Jesus, the very words used by Jesus Christ, he said, for then, at that time, for then, after the church is gone, after the church is raptured and caught away and taken away, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not. Since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. No, nor ever shall be. I want you, if you understand the language of graph, it means that you are plotting your graph, and as you draw the graph, it's going down to a peak, and that peak, then if it comes down, there is nothing as high as that peak. What Jesus was saying is that this great tribulation that is coming after the rapture has taken place. If you have heard about the First World War, there were sufferings and there were people that died painful death. If you have heard about the Second World War, there were people that died and the death was devastating. Millions of people died. If you have heard about the collapse of Jerusalem and the temple, AD 70, many people died and the suffering was so much and was so great. It was like people didn't have desire to live. They said, take me out of this place. If you see the ghastly accident and people suffered, if you see somebody who have been sick and the pain is terrible and you say, what else can somebody suffer? This is too much. The Lord is saying uh, the time of the great tribulation. It will be a time of suffering. It will be a time of affliction. It will be a time of pain. It will be a time so terrible that it had not happened like that since the beginning of the world until that time. No, no, ever shall be. That's the prophecy of the great tribulation in Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, looking at verse 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Jesus called it uh, tribulation. And here now Daniel says in prophetic language, it's a time of trouble. Look at this. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered talking about the children of israel a fraction of them a proportion of them a remnant of the children of israel shall be delivered and then it says everyone that shall be found written in the book written in the book it's talking about the time of the great tribulation what's the peculiarity i read it to you already let's go back to mark chapter 13 Mark chapter 13, and we're looking at verse 19. Mark chapter 13, verse 19, the peculiarity of that great tribulation. You will not be here. You must not be here at that time. Look at the peculiarity, for in those days shall be affliction. What's affliction? That's suffering. What's affliction? That's pain. What's affliction? Destruction. What's affliction? Something that causes untold, unquantifiable pain. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not 
from the beginning of the creation which God created until this time, neither shall be. That's the peculiarity. In Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 2, Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 2, Joel the prophet is telling us the same thing. He's saying it will be so peculiar. It is nothing that had never happened. Well, we know that something had happened in the world. Uh, the terrible things uh, of uh, sorrow happened in the world. But this will be so peculiar. It had never happened like that before. A day of darkness. That's Joel chapter 2 verse 2. A day of darkness. A day of gloominess. A day of clouds. A day of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong there has not been ever the like. That's the peculiarity. There had not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. The, uh, the peculiarity of the Great Tribulation is that this is a peculiar suffering. This is particular suffering. And this is special suffering that had never been and will never be. You will not be here at that time in Jesus' name. But you know, it will happen to the whole world. It will cover the whole face of the earth. Uh, look at Zephaniah chapter 1, reading from verse 15. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 15. It says that day is a day of wrath. A day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress. A day of wasteness and des de desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Well, you put everything together, trouble, distress, wasteness, desolation, darkness, gloominess, distress, and darkness, you know, it's a terrible time. That's the peculiarity of that time. Look at verse 18 of that Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It's the day of wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy readers of all them that dwell in the land. Actually, as you look at this, it mentions in that verse, it says it's the time of the Lord's wrath. The time of the great tribulation is the time of wrath. But let me show you this. We're looking at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. We're looking at verse 12. In Revelation chapter 6, reading from verse 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black. You remember the description of Zephaniah? The sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood. And then in verse 13, in verse 13, it tells us, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And then in verse 14, it says, and the heaven departed as a scroll, that's the sky, the firmament departed as a scroll, and when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Verse 15 now, verse 15 says, and the kings of the earth and the 